Wait, okay, so you're putting the harness so on right I, now. Yeah, I have to fit it around my <laughs> ring. So you're wearing a ring right now for yeah. this. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, it's getting hot out. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Welcome. Yes. Oh. Chill bar. Thank you. I'm showing first. Okay, cool. Oh, feels good in here. Oh my god, thank god. Oh. Wait, okay, so you're putting the harness on so right I, now. Yeah, I have to fit it around my ring. <laughs> so you're wearing a ring right now for yeah. this. Yes, 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 because see, it has a. This snaps around the. I love it. Your body, your body looks amazing. Trust me. Yes. Thank you so much for doing this, and so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. We're at Chill Bar, which is where you dance as well, right? Yes, yes. I dance here Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. How long have you been dancing for? This kind of dancing, go-go dancing, for probably about six, seven years. But I used to work for Disney when I was very young. <laughs> as, a, as a dancer? Yeah, I was uh, characters in the, par in, the, in the park, so I would dance uh, in the parades and the shows and... All that kind of stuff. Yeah. What what characters were you? Everything that was in my height range. I'm I'm not that tall. Tweedledee, Tweedledum, Mr. Smee. I did Mr. Smee a lot. Uh, the Rabbit uh, from Alice in Wonderland, um, Chip and Dale. Just any character that was in my height range. Mainly, I did Mr. Smee. I love it. The owners of Chill are clients of mine from my gallery. Uh, for, God, almost 20 years. They asked if I wanted to dance here, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I would come here and um, see the dancers, and you know, I, don't, I don't look like any of the other dancers, really. I mean, they're all in their 20s. And, <laughs> and uh, so I was kind of surprised when they originally asked me if I wanted to dance. I was like, really? You want me to dance? I mean, that was one of the things that I was so interested in talking to you about is... You know, when you think of a, a, a dancer, you think of someone 20, 21, 22. And I love that, you know, you're defying that and showing that we could be sexy and make money being sexy at any age, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. I do very well. I do very well here. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. <laughs> you don't sound like you're bragging. You're just being honest. I, I do. I make a lot. And I think a lot of times some of the other dancers will see me with like 20s and 10s and 5s and all this like <laughs> lots of money and think like, how's he doing that? But I, I think it's more about it being personality driven and that I love it. I'm not doing it to make my rent. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just doing it because I love to dance. <laughs> Being a content creator, I have to put my email address out there so that brands or potential interviewees can reach out and have a way to contact me. But that also opens the door to countless scam emails from fake brands pretending that they want to work with me. I know that one of the main reasons why I get so many spam calls and spam texts these days is because companies just can't keep our information secure. Recently, Ticketmaster was hacked and the data of 560 million users was put up for sale on the dark web. The data stolen includes full names, addresses, email addresses, phone numbers, and credit card data. At best, this is going to lead to a lot more spam, but at worst, fraud. And what is Ticketmaster going to do about this? Nothing. They said they didn't think the hack would have a material impact on our overall business. All these businesses happily collect our data but do nothing to protect them, and that is why I use Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura alerts me when my data has been part of a data breach or leaked on the dark web. It gives me fast fraud alerts if anyone tries to use that data to access my credit or bank accounts. And it removes my information from data broker websites so I get less spam. I also get things like transaction monitoring, a VPN, antivirus, a password manager, parenter controls, and identity theft insurance. I get this all in one app at a very affordable price. If my info was compromised in the Ticketmaster data breach, I wouldn't worry because Aura is always on and it is always working to keep me safe. I'm not leaving myself or my family vulnerable to data breachers. And if you don't want to either, go to aura.com slash Mac Cullen and try your first two weeks for free. Also linked in the description. Now, yesterday we met Terry, who's been sending money to her boyfriend, Ricardo, who claims he's stuck in Canada, waiting to receive the money from their Bitcoin investment. For the last two years, my sister Terry has been involved with a man by the name of Ricardo. They met on Facebook Messenger. He wanted someone to spoil and i said you can spoil me he's very handsome ricardo 
calls me his wife. Sometimes I cannot figure out what he's saying, but he doesn't sound African. When Vice Magazine did a feature story on me, was when I realized, like, I hadn't realized how bad it really was, and that I was singled out as one of the, it's like myself and one other man's images are being used more than anybody else's all over the world for romance scams. When it got to the point where it became a safety issue for me was when it got very scary. I got to the gallery and there was a message on my phone and it was from a man and he said, if I ever catch you talking to my wife again, I'm gonna slit your throat. Oh my God. I knew exactly what it was, but you know, a lot of these scammers will say they're me. They won't even make up a name. They'll say they're James, Jarris, and they own an art gallery. And they'll even tell these people, don't call me, don't ever call me at the gallery. You know, because I've gotten phone calls from women that have called me and said, I know you told me not to call you at the gallery, but I need my, you know, $800 that I loaned you. And I'm like, you loaned me, James Scott Jarris, $800. Well, I sent it to your real name. And I was like, okay, you know, and I knew exactly, but I was like, okay, so you sent it to my real name in here in Palm Springs in my gallery. Well, no, she sent it to some Western Union in, in Nigeria. And then I was like, what am I doing in Nigeria? <laughs> and she said, oh, because you told me your daughter was sick. And I was like, God, lady, listen to yourself. When like, was the first time that you realized that women were getting scammed and sending money to people thinking they were you? Ten years ago. I mean, it, I've been dealing with this regularly. And I used to spend a lot of time trying to convince these people that it wasn't me. It's not me. After they sent out all this money and got scammed, then the person would disappear and then they would do a search and find the real me because I'm easy to find them all over the internet. And um, <laughs> one woman actually said, um, well, I know it's you because I've seen you naked. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, everybody's seen me naked. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, it, it's, it's kind of scary. I mean, I've actually, my gallery is just by appointment now. And it never was before, but the last like several years, the gallery's just been by appointment because I'm, I'm too nervous that someone's going to come in thinking that, you know, I, the one that scammed them, you know, it's happened here at the club on the box. What happened? I was, I was dancing. This was just like a couple of months ago. I was dancing on the box in the other room and um, this guy came up to me and he was tipping me and he was really nice. And we were like kind of leaned down and we were chatting and he said, can I ask you a question? And I said, yeah, of course. And he said, well, you know, I just don't understand. We were like talking for several months. I knew as soon as he said talking for several months, I knew what was going to, what was coming out next. But he said, you know, we've been talking for several months and I thought we were getting along really well. And, you know, you asked me for money and I just didn't have any and you blocked me. And I just, I don't know why you would do that to me. And I was like, because it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was somebody using my pictures. It was because it's not just on one thing. It's on everything. It's on scruff, grinder, ones I've never even heard of. Growler, plenty of fish. <laughs> so it's gay and straight they're targeting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, more straight, though. Than the, than the gay. That is very scary because you're walking down the street and you don't know who sees you and is mad at you or has a vendetta against you. Yeah. I've been in the gallery and once two women came in and, you know, they were, they were kind of like looking at the art but doing a side eye <laughs> at me, like, you know, pretending that they were looking at the art. I knew right away. I knew what was going on. And I was just like, hey, how's it going? How's your day? And they're like, well, you know, my friend here was, was scammed by someone. At least they knew it was somebody using my pictures. But we wanted, to, we wanted to see the real you because we just think that we knew you owned an art gallery in Palm Springs. So we were in town. We came in and we wanted to meet you. And some of these people want to be my friend because they think that they know me because they've had this relationship with a fake me. <laughs> and even what, ma what makes it even worse is that the scammers are using your art gallery and your real name so people could be convinced that it's you. Oh yeah, I mean, they, they, I've had people, because this scammer will also sell my art try to sell well you know he'll he'll be like oh you like this photograph it's such and such amount of money and you know i had a woman call me and say you know it was all angry because she paid for a pair of photographs that i had um that i had done but that she purchased at a discounted rate you know and sent the money to somebody else and you know wanted her artwork and i was like i i didn't sell you the art and i've had to put disclaimers on everything on on my website for the gallery, I have a disclaimer saying, you know, someone is impersonating me. I only sell art through the gallery. P 
period. I don't do anything outside of the gallery. So if somebody's telling you they can get you a better deal, it's a scam. I fell in love with two different guys on the internet. How much money in total have you sent him? Thousands? Oh my god. 20,000? More. 30? More. 40? Nice! Oh my gosh, it's so colorful! So he's an actual person too, but mm -hmm. he, his name is Raven, and the, right. but you think his name is James. Yeah. Where have you been sleeping right now? You just find a random spot in the street? Yeah, pretty much. You told me in the car that someone from Texas is maybe coming tonight to see you. Yeah, that's correct. Who is this? It's a person from the past that I don't know if I'm ready to let back into my life or not. Is it someone, one of, the, one of the people that have been taking your money? Cindy? Oh my gosh! Good to see you! Oh my... I'm like... Ah, oh, it's been so long! Gosh. You look great. You, you really do. You do honey, thank, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. The audience is going to be so happy to see you. They've been asking where you have no been. Way, yeah. You are the most asked about for sure person on my channel about you're where you're oh completely. That's so sweet. You look great and your teeth look great. Are those new? Yeah. I just feel so happy to be in here and Aww. just to see your mojo is back, I feel like. I do too. I do too. I do totally. It took a long time, but yeah, I'm back. I'm doing an episode right now that is focused on a man who loves scammers, have been using his picture to scam people oh. and get money from them. And it made me think of you, honestly. Of course. Of course. I go to Silver Lake Community Church every twice a week, and they have a man who goes there also who looks just like my scammer. But he's not at all. You did say the word scammer. I feel like this is the first time I've ever heard you actually voice oh, really? that he's a scammer. Oh, right. Last time I met up with you, even though you had kind of felt like he was scamming, there was still a part of you that was saying... I know, you're right. I've lost that. I, I give up on that. You know, it's not real. He was just a scammer. Was it hard for you to come to terms with that? Yeah, yeah. It took a long time. Long time. But it's now that it's there, I, I feel... Like, I learned from it. I'm 62 almost, and I've never been, like, this spiritual, I guess. I love my friends at church. I go twice a week. It makes me feel good. You really do look so much happier than last time I saw you. Oh, thank you. Anything. I feel happier. Have you been talking to any guys online? No, no. I don't even accept friendship from people I don't want. A man with a handsome guy with a puppy. Forget it. Nope, that's a scam. <laughs> Good. I mean, it's unfortunate we have to look at it that way, but it's true. You live, you live and learn, you know? I think about how many people you probably have saved through sharing your story online. I hope so. I hope so. Because I think that a lot of times people that are older, in the you know, older generations, they can fall for these scams so easily. It's very true. You get old, you get lonely, you get insecure, and... A handsome picture on the, on the screen saying, I like you, I love you, marry me. You believe it because you're lonely and you're susceptible. Yeah, I even thought, especially because, you know, my, my, my channel is about the queer community. I think a lot about uh, people that are in our community that are lonely or maybe newly transitioned, like you had newly transitioned and just want somebody to accept you and love you. Exactly. And in my story, I was the ug ugly ducking story. 350 pound man to a 200 pound woman. Like in two years, you know how to understand how people are treating you now. I wish that you could feel how many people love you online too. It really, I've done over a hundred episodes and there's no one that people ask for more about an update from than you. Oh my God, that's so funny. Thank you. Your soul like really radiates and you're just such a beautiful person. I mean, I knew I fell in love with you the first day I met you, but it's just so beautiful to know how much the people really care about you. That's so sweet to hear. Thank you. That restores my confidence. I owned a crystal ball before. I never have. Well, reach in here and grab one and unroll, unpack it. Okay. And that's the one you can grab. <gasps> Thank you. These are quartz crystals. The highest quality of quartz crystals. Oh, very cool, very cool, very cool. Wow, it's gorgeous. And you'll, see, you'll see something in there. I see something already. <gasps> Is it a rainbow? Wait, really? Uh, yeah, of course, of course. 
It is. It's so gorgeous inside. I know. Isn't it pretty? I'm gonna hold on to this. Good. I'm glad you did. Thank you. You're I'll put it in my backpack that I do all my interviews at to, for good luck. Cause you bring me good luck, Cindy. You really do. That's a new little sign too, right? Yeah, it's very cool, huh? Well, thank you, Matt. I can't wait to talk to you again and see. I know. What you're so doing. good to see you. Let me help you with this. Thank you, thank you. Okay, you got everything. You need yeah. help getting out? No, I'm good. You okay? I really appreciate you. I love you so much. Mm, thank you. Man. I'll see you soon. Okay. Oh, it's locked. All right. That's fine. Have fun today. Thank you. I will. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Right. Drive carefully home. Okay. Be careful getting out. All right. Good. Okay. I can help. Yeah. You got it. Yep. All right, I'll see you soon, Cindy. All right, have a good day. Goodbye. How do you think that they've picked you? Like, was there any, have you found out any information about how that was picked? Only once did I contact the fake profile. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? Don't use my images. And uh, they actually said, well, send us $1,000 and we won't use your, your pictures. Um, you're too, your pictures are too easy to scam people with. They're going to scam you to stop scamming other people. Yeah, like if I gave them $1,000, they were really going to stop. But then when I found out from, from the, the Vice magazine reporter and um, from other um, sources that uh, they're actually gangs that put together packets that they sell to other scammers and my pictures are in that packet because they'll say this guy is it's really easy to scam people with this guy's pictures and so they'll sell them to other scammers and it's just that's kind of like how it's happened and it's a it's a big industry i mean i i would never send anybody money over the internet and i always tell people it's so interesting because it's like do you you shouldn't feel guilty, but do you feel no. do you feel like this like sense of like oh my gosh I feel like people think it's I, guilty. I, well, I've had people say to me, well, it's because you're you know you shouldn't be posting on on social media. You should, and I'm like, I'm not gonna like st stop my life and move to an island somewhere to not you know because I'm I'm out there. I mean, with the with the fans, um, with uh, my Twitter. <laughs> Thanks. Ooh, I'll link that below. <laughs> Very naughty Twitter. <laughs> Do you haven't checked it out yet? <laughs> Very naughty Twitter. <laughs> Are you dating now? No, I'm not. I'm single. Do you want to be dating? I've been single for about two years now, and I have not been on one date. Um, people ask me, and I, it, it just kind of makes me cringe a little. Like, oh, date. Oh, like, oh, I just don't want to. <laughs> Can we just have sex? <laughs> so, you're, so you're looking for anything serious right now? I, I don't know. I just get really disappointed. And I think people see my social media side, they see me dancing, they think it's just going to be all exciting and crazy and wild. And it's, I like just being at home and being with my, my animals. Up until this last breakup, I did envision myself with a partner um, and living out my life. Because I thought this last partner was going to be it. And I was going to be done. <laughs> and uh, it didn't happen. And so I have to be happy with myself because I feel like I'm probably going to, it's just going to be my, just me uh, for a while, um, unless I do meet somebody. But I don't know. I'm not really looking. I think that there's different chapters in all of our lives where sometimes we're wanting a partner, sometimes we're wanting ourselves to be our partner, you know? I don't want to get disappointed. I think that's, I think that's a big part of it is just the disappointment of um, really liking somebody and being in a relationship and then other stuff happens and you're just like, yeah. Do you think that part of the reason why you're not looking for someone right now is because you're scared to get hurt? Absolutely. When I weigh, um, you know, the, the, the joy of being in a relationship with somebody and those feelings to the feelings that I have when, it's, when it ends from a disappointment or something, I, it's worth it to just not deal with it. If someone would have told me 10 years ago that I was going to be doing any of this stuff now, I would have said no. <laughs> Is that because of your past boyfriend? Um, no, I, I just, I kind of hit a point in my life where I stopped really worrying about what other people thought. You know, I stopped being so self-deprecating on, you know, my body or, you know, oh, I can't do that because I'm too fat or I can't do this because I'm not this or that. And I just basically embraced exactly what I am and what I have to offer. And that was kind of how it all happened. I think that's the beauty with getting older as we start to realize nobody actually cares. You know what I mean? Like everyone, you think everyone's, you think everyone's like looking at you, judging you. And it's, you start to realize like everyone's just 
in their own head about their own things. So just live your life for yourself. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because I'm, um, I get a lot of people that will will tip me and say you're representing, you know, <laughs> which I think is great. Um, because I, I guess I am. I guess I am representing for the older community. I mean, but I have a lot of younger guys that you know tip me and I have fun, you know, with. So how old are you? Oh, is that rude? No, no, it's not, it's not rude, but you know, I don't say my exact age because of all the fake profiles. I never put out there my birthday or my exact height or weight or anything just because the less information I put out there on the internet, the better. But I can tell you I'm in my late to mid early sixties. <laughs> you know, it makes me think not thank God that you were the, cho the chosen one for the scammers, but because you're such a light, happy person that you're able to deal with it more than a lot of people that could. Definitely. Um, well, it used to drive me crazy and it used to be a, a source of a lot of anxiety for me, a lot of anxiety, but I've just had to brush it off and just accept it as part of my life now. And thank you for, you know, taking the time today to talk with me about it because it's going to reach a lot of people. And I hope that if we can save one person from watching this video, you know, then that's the goal, you know? Absolutely. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Thank you. I was, I was very nervous about this, but... You did amazing. You, you did so good. And I just, I adore you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Good job. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, good job. You did so great. Thank you. Love scams has got to be one of the worst scams that I've ever heard of. Just the idea that it targets, you know, lonely or vulnerable people and often they are elderly people. It just, it makes me sick to my stomach to think of how many people have given their life savings or a huge chunk of the money that they've worked so hard to, to scammers and then are just left to figure it out themselves once they have to come to terms with the fact that the person isn't real. It just, it's heartbreaking. And on top of that, I'm sure that it comes with a bit of shame and embarrassment. You know, it's like you, you trust that this person says they love you and this person is who they are and you send them all of this money and then everyone around you is saying, don't send them money, don't send them money, but you do anyways because you believe and you want to believe. And then you know, when you finally come to terms with the fact that you've given so much money to someone that isn't real and everyone around you had told you that already, it must, it must be embarrassing. And if, you know, anyone is watching this video and has been a victim of a love scam, I hope that you're able to release that because, I don't know, I think that love is one of the scariest and most beautiful things that we have in this lifetime. And I don't think that you should ever feel ashamed or embarrassed that you poured your heart into someone and that you, you know, that you put the effort in to create love for yourself. You know, we, we work so hard in our lives to create this future for us and to make sure we have enough in our retirement so that, you know, we can grow old and feel secure in our, in our finances and have a roof over our heads. And, you know, then I think of Cindy who gave that all up to you know, fall in love with someone that ended up being not real. And I don't know, I think that it affects more people in our community than we even think because a lot of us, it seems, grows up, you know, grow up and don't find a life partner for whatever reason. And, you know, maybe are lonely as we get older and can so easily fall for these kind of traps. And it just, it makes me sick to my stomach. I've been so inspired lately. It's I love these moments in my life where I just feel so inspired and motivated and trying to think of different spins on the channel to keep it fresh and you know I've been really inspired by certain ideas and just I don't know I'm just all this to say that thank you for continuing to watch and letting me take the channel in different directions and trying new things because I never wanted to get stagnant or stale yeah I never also never want to find myself in a creative block you know that's the worst feeling when you feel stuck and you don't know where to go and you don't know how to make the next step. I have found lately that actually going on daily walks has really helped with that. Like I'll, around four o'clock, I'll, you know, put on my headphones and drive like three minutes to my favorite neighborhood in Los Angeles and just go on a long walk. And my ideas will start 
pouring out of me certain you know certain blocks i've had towards my edits or certain ideas for other things i'm developing or you know different interview ideas or whatever it may be it's when i'm on that walk it just i think it's because i move my body it just flows out of me what what do you guys use to get yourself out of creative block or when you feel stuck or stagnant in life what do you do maybe like a bath or something i'm so curious because i love this kind of stuff like working your way out of a burnout or you know when you feel stuck what do you do let me know what you do because i will definitely take your suggestions and use them when i feel a little stifled in my creativity anyways i'll leave it with that but thank you so much for watching I really appreciate you as always, and I will see you very, very soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.